Welcome to the Bhutan e-learning program. I'm Khaganath Gajmer from uh, Dempo Central School, Sirang. In today's lesson, I'll be continuing with the topics under ionic equilibria, or in other words, it's called acid-based equilibria. In the last, uh, last lesson, we discussed about strong electrolytes, weak electrolytes. We also discussed about degree of dissociation of electrolytes. We also discussed about Austell's dilution law and ionic product of water. In today's lesson, we will be discussing of, about the following objectives that we, in the today's lesson, we are going to fulfill the following objectives. We'll try to define what is pH of a solution. We'll also try to calculate pH of a solution. We'll define buffer solution and buffer actions of certain solution. Now let's look at what is pH of a solution. Now pH of, you must have heard in several subjects, in several of uh, classes, in several topics, you must have come across this pH. In today's lesson, we are going to discuss the chemistry aspect of pH. Now pH, actually it represents, it represents the hydrogen ion concentration, which is there in the given solution. Now, mathematically, it is defined as the negative logarithm of H plus ions. Now, mathematically, the pH is calculated as negative log of H plus ion, or, in a, or it can be also written as H plus ion can be calculated as 10 to the minus, 10 to the power minus pH. This log is to the base 10. Therefore, if you have to find out the H plus ion from this equation, it becomes 10 to the power minus pH. So that's how we calculate the pH of a given solution. Now, we know if you calculate, for example, if a solution, if you calculate this, this is called pH table. Now, if we have hydrogen ion concentration, which is 10 to the power minus zero, its pH becomes zero. If we, you make use of this value here, if you substitute here the value, our pH will become zero. Now likewise, if we have 10 to the power minus one, our pH will become one. Likewise, we have pH from zero till 14. Till 14, we know that ionic product of water is 10 to the power minus 14. So in that, we have, if it is a neutral water, the, pH, the, 10, the concentration of H plus ion become negative seven, and OH also minus become negative seven. So in that case, we have pH of seven. We say the water is neutral. Now the solution can have various, I mean the, the concentration of H plus ion or OH minus ion can vary. Now if we have seven, 10 to the power minus seven H plus ion, we can also have 10 to the power minus seven concentration of OH minus ion, OH minus ions. So that gives ionic product of water, which is equal to 10 to the power minus 14 at 25 degrees Celsius. So if we have, let's say, if we have 10 to the power minus zero concentration of H plus ion, then it's OH minus ion will become 10 to the power minus 14. So that time the pH will become zero. Likewise, these are the pH values now, depending on the number of H plus ion present in the solution. So if we have a pH from zero, let's say one to six or zero to six, if we have this pH, then the solution is considered to be acidic. If we have a pH of seven, where we have hydrogen ion concentration, 10 to the power minus seven, our pH becomes seven. So the solution is considered to be neutral. And if we have pH eight and above, or seven and above, till 14, then the solution is considered to be alkaline or basic in nature. So this is pH, pH scale, that's how we get. We cannot have, at 25 degrees Celsius, our pH scale is from zero to 14. We cannot have beyond that because the ionic product of water is from, that, that is the highest thing that the ionic product of water is 10 to the power minus 14. That's why our highest level, highest value of pH is 14. Now, looking at the pH of different substances, different foodstuffs, all of these foodstuffs will have different pH. Now, all of this, if you look at all of these foodstuffs, especially the fruits and all, they have higher, I mean, lower value of pH. Their pH is very low, so they're acidic. And all these foodstuffs, if their pH value is higher, above seven, they are considered to be basic in nature. And if it is pure water, we have pH of seven. So depending on concentration of H plus ion in the solution, we have different pH. 
Now, how do we calculate pH of a given solution? For example, you are given a soft drink. In that, we have, let's say, 3 into 10 to the power minus 5 mole of per liter of hydrogen ion. This many moles of hydrogen ions are present in the solution. Then how do we calculate the pH at 25 degrees Celsius? So the pH of this solution can be calculated as, this is the formula to calculate pH. And we substitute the value of hydrogen ion concentration from this. So we get the answer as 4.52. So our pH value has become 4.52. That means whatever the drink that is there has a pH of 4.52, which is acidic in nature. If we calculate pH, we can also calculate pOH because pH is there in the solution when we have H plus ion, we can also have OH minus ion in the solution. If we calculate pH, we can also calculate pOH with a similar formula. So pOH, pOH can be also calculated as negative log of OH minus ion. Now, how, what is the relationship between pH and pOH? Now, always we know this is called ionic product of water, Kw equals to H plus ion concentration into OH minus ion concentration. This becomes the ionic product of water. And at 25 degrees Celsius, we know ionic product of water is 10 to the power minus 14. Now, if you put logarithm on both the side, negative logarithm on both the side, then we will have negative log of H plus plus negative log of OH minus 14. This becomes 14. Log of 10 to the power base 14, I mean, power of minus 14 will become 14. Now, what is minus log of H plus ion? It is pH. Then negative log of OH minus ion is pOH. So we have pH, pOH, pH, pOH will always be 14. So sum of pH and pOH will always be 14, but that is at 25 degrees Celsius. We will not have the same value if we increase or decrease the temperature. This value will slightly change depending on how the water undergoes dissociation. That is called self-ionization of water. Let's look at another numerical. Calculate the concentration of H plus ion and OH minus ion of a solution which pH is 4.8. Now that there is a solution whose pH is 4.8, from there, how do we calculate the H plus ions or OH minus ions? So we use the formula again, similarly. So pH, we calculate in this manner. So our pH of the solution is given as 4.8. So from here, we can calculate H plus ion equal to 10 to the power minus 4.8. Or if you further calculate it, then you get 1.58 into 10 to the power minus 5 mole per liter. So this is the concentration of hydrogen ion that is present in that particular solution. So from pH, we can also calculate hydrogen ion concentration. Now, if you have calculated hydrogen ion concentration, you can also calculate OH minus ion concentration. So we know the relation. We know the relation. This one, pH plus ion into OH minus ion will always give you 10 to the power minus 14. If we rearrange the formula, we'll get OH. We, this is the pH. This is concentration of H plus ion. That's what the, we obtain it from here. So we substitute the volume, uh, volume values, and then we get the value of um, concentration of OH minus ions and as this. So this is how we calculate. If you are given a pH, we can calculate concentration of hydrogen ion, con hydrogen ion as well as OH minus ion. Or you can be given the pOH value. From there also, we can calculate the hydrogen ion concentration and OH minus concentration in the given solution. Now question? OK, think over this question. You must have come across pH, and then where do we apply this kind of you know, concepts? When we learn about the pH, now it has to be very, very practical in our day-to-day -day life. When we know the concepts, we should be able to make proper decision, and we'll have to make use of the knowledge that we learn. Now let's look at, in the modern times, acidity is one of the major health issues among the people who tend to be least concerned about the type of food they consume. Which of these drinks would you recommend to a person suffering from acute acidity? Now you are given this condition. A person comes to you and then asks for a drink. Now a person also says that 
you or she is suffering from acute acidity, the stomach upset because of the acid formation in the stomach. Now, the person is asking, requesting a drink from you. Now, which of this would you serve to a person? One is a pineapple juice, other one is a cucumber juice. Now, the conditions given here are, the leveling is also given on the drink, on both of this drink. Now, you make a decision, which one would you serve? Think over it. Okay, which could be the answer? So definitely, it's a cucumber juice. So hope you made the right decision. If you offered pineapple juice, then you made the wrong decision. So that's where we apply the concept that we have learned from this session. Next topic, let's look at what is buffer solution, buffer. Look at the buffer action. In this, uh, we'll see how these solutions are acting as a buffer. How do they resist the change of pH when acid or base or water or keeping it for longer duration of time, how they are resisting the ch uh, change of pH in them. Let's look at the buffer action of the first type of buffer that we have, which is the buffer of single salt, which is ammonium acetate. The ammonium acetate in the solution will dissociate in this manner, forming, forming ammonium ion and acetate ion. Now in this solution, if we take this solution and then add acid to it, if you add acid to it, meaning you are adding, we are adding hydrogen plus ion into this solution. What will happen is actually when hydrogen ion is being added here, the pH must decrease. But what is happening is this solution does not allow its pH to change, even if we add acid in it. Now how it is not allowing, let's see, now, when acid, that, the H plus ion that is coming from the acid will enter the solution. Now, in the solution, we'll have ammonium ion and then acetate ion that are there, already there in the solution. So, the incoming H plus ion in the solution will be now captured by the acetate ion. This acetate ion will combine with the H plus ion, which is coming from the acid, and then form acetic acid, which is a weak acid. Now, this weak acid being weak electrolyte, it will not considerably dissociate and give back the H plus ion. So whatever H plus ion is coming from the acid into the solution, it's all being captured by acetate ion in the solution. So that way, this solution will not allow H plus ion to change in its solution so that pH remains same. So that's the buffer action of the first type of buffer, which is is that of the solution of single salt. Let's look at the second type. Now, if we add base to the same solution, the solution of single salt, if we add base, how this solution is not allowing its pH to change? Let's look at the mechanism. Now, when base is added, base is added means you're adding OH minus into the solution. So if OH minus is ions are entering into the solution, the pH must increase actually, but this solution will not allow the pH to change. How it is not allowing? Let's see the mechanism. Now, the, all the OH minus ions coming from the base will be now captured by ammonium ion, which is there in the solution. So ammonium ion will combine with OH minus ions and then form ammonium hydroxide, which is again a weak base. Being a weak base, it will not considerably dissociate and then give back all the OH minus ion and H plus ion, um, ammonium ion. Therefore, whatever OH minus ions are being added there, it's all being captured and then there's no considerable increase in the amount of OH minus ion, therefore no increase in the value of pH for this particular solution. Let's look at the buffer action of another type, the second type of buffer that we have, which is acidic buffer, prepared from weak acid and its salt of strong base. So this two will give you the acidic buffer. Let's look at how it acts as a buffer. In this solution of this two, will give these ions, the sodium acetate will combine, I mean it will dissociate to form acetate ion and sodium ion. And this acetic acid will also dissociate to form acetate ion and H plus ion. So these ions are there in this buffer solution. Now what happens if you add acid to this solution? Now what happens is here, the H plus ion, which is coming from the acid, 
Now here we have acetate ion, we also have sodium ion, we also have acetate ion, we also have again H plus ion in the solution. Now this H plus ion which is coming from the acid, I can either combine with this one or this one. It cannot combine with sodium and hydrogen ion because they are same charges. So definitely it should combine either with this acetate ion or this acetate ion. They are same, ions are same. But let's see from which compound, the acetate ion coming from which compound will it combine with the H plus ion coming from the acid. So definitely it will combine with the acetate ion coming from sodium acetate. If it combines with this one, what will happen is again, more of this has to be produced to combine with H plus ion. So in the process, more of this has to dissociate. Again, in the process, more of this H plus will be produced. On one hand, the acid may be captured by this one, but other hand, this again being produced. So there's no effect. So it has to, this H plus ion has to be combined with this acetate ion coming from sodium acetate. So this two will combine, this H plus ion will be uh, uh, captured by this acetate ion to form again weak acid. Now weak acid will form in the solution. Again, this being weak will not dissociate again to give back all the H plus ion. So that's way the number of H plus ion in the solution is maintained constant so that pH does not change. Now what happens if we add base to this kind of buffer solution? Base means you're adding OH minus ion. So here, the OH min minus ions are, now it will combine with either H plus ion or sodium ion. These are the two possibilities, but it will be always combining with H plus ion coming from acetic acid. It cannot combine with Na plus ion because Na plus and OH minus will give you NaOH, sodium hydroxide, which is again a strong electrolyte. Again, it will dissociate back to give OH minus ion. So that way the OH minus ion will not be captured. So it has to combine with the H plus ion, which is coming from acetic acid. So when this ions combine, it will form water. So this water again being weak, electrolyte will not dissociate back and to give OH minus ion, H plus ion. So that way, all the H OH minus ion, which are coming from the base are captured by the H plus ion coming from acetic acid in the buffer to form water. So that way, the buffer solution maintains its constant pH. Let's look at the third type of buffer, which is the buffer of salt of weak base and strong acid and weak base. Now these two compounds in the buffer solution will dissociate in this manner. Ammonium hydroxide, it gives ammonium ion and OH minus ions. At the same time, ammonium chloride also will dissociate to give H, uh, NH4 plus ions and then Cl minus ions. So these ions are there in the solution, in the buffer solution. Now what happens if we add acid? If you add acid, this acid coming from the, I mean the H plus ion coming from the acid will be now captured by OH minus ions, which is there in the buffer solution to form water, water. So this water being weak electrolyte will not again dissociate back to give the H plus ion. So that way, the H plus ions coming from the acids is all being captured. So pH will not change. If you add base to this buffer solution, again, the base coming from the OH minus ions coming from the base will combine with the ammonium ion. There is no possibility to combine with this OH minus to combine with the ammonium ion coming from ammonium hydroxide. It has to combine with the ions, ammonium ion coming from NH4Cl only. So that way it will form again ammonium hydroxide. So OH minus plus ammonium, hydro, uh, ammonium ion will give ammonium hydroxide, which is again a weak electrolyte, which will not dissociate again to give back the ions. So that way the pH is being maintained by this particular type of buffer solution. Let's look at buffer, I mean blood, our blood, human blood as buffer. Oftentimes, we, many times, every day, what we do is we take acidic food, basic foods, every day in our food items, we take it. What happens is our blood pH is around 7.4. This is the constant pH of our human blood. Now, if there's a slight change in the pH of our blood, it is fatal to life. It's very, very dangerous to our life. Our function, all the biological functions that is being carried out by the blood is done at a constant pH of 7.4. Now, if we, we eat sour things, we eat bitter things, we eat salty things, 
all these things are actually being absorbed by our body, then it will directly and it will enter into the blood. So what happens is, if acid enters into the blood, what will happen? Our pH of the blood will decrease. So our blood becomes more acidic. And that is so dangerous to life. And if we add, I mean, if base enters into our blood, again, the pH will increase. Again, that is dangerous to life. The function, the biological activity, the biological function of the blood will not occur. But what, whatever we eat, though acid and bases enters the blood, blood tries to maintain its constant pH so that all the biological functions are being carried out. Now, how blood acts as a buffer? Let's say in our blood, we have carbonic acid, we have carbonic acid and sodium bicarbonate. These two pair of substance will act as a buffer pair. So we have carbonic acid, it's already being formed in our body due to accumulation of carbon dioxide, due, which is liberated due to respirations. Some amount of carbon dioxide tend to dissolve and form carbon dioxide. Carbonic acid, and then we also have a salt, which is sodium bicarbonate. Now these two will act as a buffer pair. Now in the blood, this carbonic acid will dissociate to form this ions. We have H plus ions and bicarbonate ions. And we also have bicarbonate, a salt, sodium bicarbonate, which will give you a sodium ion and then again bicarbonate ions. So these ions are there in the blood. Now let's look at how it resists the change of pH. Okay, let's take the bloodstream in our body. Now, in our bloody, body, in the blood, we have carbonic acid, which will dissociate and then give this ions. We also have sodium carbonate, which will dissociate to give this ions, bicarbonate ion and then sodium ion. Now what happens when the base enters into our, into our body? The OH minus ions, which is coming from the foodstuffs and entering the blood, will combine with the H plus ions, which is coming from carbonic acid, to form water. So the water will be formed. When base enters the blood, water will form and it will neutralize the base. So the number of H OH minus ions into the blood is not allowed to increase. That's how the blood maintains its constant pH. Now what happens if we eat acidic food and then acid tends to enter our body? That time what will happen is the H plus ions coming from the acid foodstuffs will combine with the bicarbonate ion which is coming from sodium carbonate to form carbonic acid. This carbonic acid, again, it's weak acid. It's already there in our blood. So even if it, its formation will not have any impact in our body. So all the H plus ions that is coming from the foodstuffs will be neutralized. And then that way, the pH of the blood will be maintained constant. So that's how our blood act as a buffer. Let's uh, recapitulate on what we have discussed in today's uh, lesson. Uh, in today's lesson, we discussed about pH. We also discussed about pOH. We also discussed about buffer solutions and blood as buffer. We also discussed how blood act as a buffer. Now I would like you to do these questions. Please find answers for these questions. Uh, which of the following pair of compounds cannot act as a buffer? Now you find out between HCl, if HCl and sodium bicarbonates are taken together, will it act as a buffer? You find out. Next pair of compound, phosphoric acid and sodium biphosphate. Another compound, formic acid and sodium chloride. So you find out whether this pair of compounds will act as a buffer or not. Then last question, another question, uh, calculate the pH of the solution in which the number of moles of hydroxyl ions are given. Another one, try to explore and find out some of the applications of buffer in our day-to-day -day life. So find out, explore, refer some books, and then see you can, whether you can answer or not. With this, we have come to the end of our today's lesson. I'll see you in my next lesson. Thank you so much for watching.